So when you first jump into Premiere Pro and you click on the New Project button, almost instantly you're presented with a bunch of choices and you're sitting here going, oh my god, what am I supposed to select here? Well, the good news is everything inside this panel is completely modifiable later on. You can go back and you can change any of these values simply by going into the Project Settings panel. So don't worry about making any changes to this right now unless there's something obvious uh, that makes sense just by looking at it. But you can't make a wrong choice here if you leave everything set to the factory defaults. Uh, we may just might need to go back and change something later on. One thing you may want to consider at this point, in fact, something I always consider at this point, is is how I want to organize my project. When Premiere Pro creates a new project, it actually goes through and it not only creates the project file itself, but it also goes through and creates a series of folders. And those folders all get created in the same location that you save your project at typically. You'll notice that there's a tab here called Scratch Disks, and if I jump over to the Scratch Disks panel, you can see that all of these by default are set to save to the same location as my project. Now, I actually like getting in the habit of doing this. I'm in a situation where I need to create uh, files that I can hand off to other evangelists at Adobe uh, for use as demo files. So I try and keep everything in one location and I always make a point of creating a project. Um, I create a new folder and store everything inside of that folder. Just keep in mind if you prefer to have like a list of projects all in one location and have the project files in one area and you want to have all of these scratch disks in a different area, you have to go in here and make this change. And you probably want to do it now. If you don't do it now, it's going to create these scratch disk locations for you right now in the same location as your project, and then you're going to have a bunch of extra folders to deal with. So I'm going to go ahead and jump back over to the General tab and go down to the lower corner and click the Browse button. We'll go ahead and select the RAID, create a new folder here, and we will call this one Byte size 01. And so now I have my new folder. And now I can also name my project. As a rule, I generally try and name my project the same as the folder that I've created here. Um, and now immediately you're presented with another option here. Now, what this is asking is it wants to create a timeline. Uh, the thing about creating a timeline, the really nice thing about CS4 is that if at this point you're not sure what type of format you're going to be editing in, you don't really have to. You can actually hit cancel and that'll just open up your project with no open timeline and you can pick and choose a timeline sequence at that point. Um, all of these different choices and options here, um, the biggest thing to be aware of uh, if you know what type of camera you're working with, if you're working with a specific camera, the majority of your footage is going to be uh, coming from, let's say, an EX1 from Sony. You'd want to make sure and select the proper preset for those cameras. Premiere Pro always tries to work in a native format, and if you do this, it's just going to give you the best possible performance on your timeline. Now one challenge in this day and age is the fact that even if you know what type of camera you're currently editing with, you also need to know the precise format that you're working with. Uh, many cameras offer different recording modes. Uh, just to stick with the EX-1 for a minute, the Sony EX-1 camera can record at a couple of different frame rates, a couple of different sizes. There's a high quality mode, there's a low quality mode, there's an HDV compatible mode, and so knowing exactly which format you've recorded your media in um, again, you want to match the, uh, for best possible performance, you want to match the timeline with your recorded media. So at this point, the beauty of CS4, and this is a big change compared to earlier versions of Premiere Pro, you don't need to know what your format is before you start and create your project. Many times, I'll just hit that cancel button at this point, and that way I can get into Premiere Pro and I can start looking at media and figuring out uh, what my recording format is before I've even created a timeline. If you know what it is, go ahead and select it from here, but otherwise, you can just click cancel at this point and start looking at footage inside of Premiere Pro.